Hi, I'm Alex Popov, a student of Learning Alias and an Alias Modeler at Jaguar Land Rover. Um, this is the second of two videos um, showing different workflows of how you can build this kind of Y, y blend, uh, where you have two fillets going into one fillet. Um, the first video was a sort of CAS style workflow, so a bit quicker, a bit less control. Um, and this one is more towards class A kind of principles where you'll get a cleaner patch layout and a bit more control over your surfaces and reflections. So we'll get started and the first steps are very much the same as in the previous video so I won't talk too much about them. Um, first of all we want to planarize this edge and this edge roughly. Um, so I'll just bash down a curve extend okay and remember I'm in orthographic viewing mode rather than perspective get in nice and close and line there we go the curve up so you can see the curve lines up with this edge and I can project in view And I get a nice curve on surface. I can then trim convert. Oops, there we go. Lovely natural natural surface boundary to build off. Hide that surface. Invisible. Okay, cool. Um, just ignore these curves on surface and templates. They're just for my reference at the moment. Uh, I did a here's one I did earlier style uh, practice session. So, next thing to do, we're going to get a freeform blend, and this again, this surface is just for for, for reference to get a little bit of a look see. Um, so you put that in. I'll get to edit, extend, extrapolate, merge on, go. Kill the history. I can delete this curve, and what I'll do is turn controls off so it's a bit easier so what we're going to use this surface for is basically to find some natural intersections uh, with this surface and get a curve on surface that we can use to put some nice construction curves in that we know are going to work with this surface and this surface so how we do that first of all as I say we extend this back And this is just guesswork at this point. So it's about there. That's cool. Now, this surface will untrim. Where's untrim? There it is. And again, cool. Now, we can extend this time with merge off. And go and bring this guy out here. Now extend again. Now we merge on. Bring him through there like that. Okay, so you can see what we've got. Now I can intersect. This surface. Let's turn these off for a minute. This surface. This surface. For now I'll hide the template as well. Invisible, that's getting in the way, so you can see. Let's hide that. Right, so invisible. You can see the curve on surface that we've got. Now, what we want to do is just have a quick look see. to see what's going to happen. One degree free, so I can get rid of, oops, those two, curve X. There we go. So I've got a degree three curve there, and I'm going to align it with curvature to my curve on surface. 
Now that looks bad to begin with, but realistically, I'll pull that this way and this guy that way. Coach came on there. Fine. What we're looking for here is we're starting to get a relationship between this surface boundary and these surfaces, this surface boundary and that surface boundary. And then we want a nice flow from this curve on surface and from a curve that looks like it's going to split this, these surface edges perfectly down the middle like that. I hope you can see my mouse, but there we go. So now what we need to do is basically set up a surface in place of this one. As I say, that was just a dummy surface to see what was going on. Um, and so we know it's roughly in the right place when we get this kind of condition. I can delete that, I can delete that curve. Now I can either fit curve this or easier is just to snap and snap. So I know that's in line, curve, move. As I say, I have these as reference points. Um, I shouldn't have cut that dummy surface before I moved that curve, but I uh, got a bit ahead of myself. Um, so what we want to do now is basically get a curve aligned to these curves on surface. So what I forgot to show you guys was um, how to get these curves on surface. And basically what I would have done is that curve that I put between here and here, just move it to the corner of where our dummy surface was, extend it up with merge and extrapolate on, and then project in the view. So you get these curves on surface. And then you can slap another curve in like this one and align it to those curves on surface. Where's surfaces square tool now? One, two, three, four. Control on. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And notice how all the surface boundaries are lining up. Uh, so don't forget to. Up curvature here and on three. Let's be cheeky and see if it'll give us tangency. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if it does curvature. No. Tangent, that'll do. Okay. So, next thing to do is bring back this surface that we will use to get this curve on surface. Um, again, I'm just gonna get rid of those templates now. I don't need them. So, surface edit, intersect this one with this one, gives us the curve on surface that we need. Now I can hide this guy again invisible whoops what have we done? there we go now same process we're just going to put degree three curve for now and snap it here and here and align Cool, then I'm gonna get another curve, degree two this time. And this is more just a sanity check. What we're gonna do is align this curve 
of this one. Let's see where he's going. So, as I say, we want him to split this surface boundary and this surface boundary. It looks like it's doing just that. And I can tweak him like so to get it where I need it. Um, another thing I can do is re-invoke the history of this align curve and that will again change what's going on. So these are all ways of keeping live history with your construction curves um, so that you can tweak things later down the line. Um, yeah, I'm happy with where that curve is. So. What I'm going to do now is project this curve onto this surface and then align this curve to it so that we know we've got a good flow of curvature in this direction. So to do that, oops, project normal, this surface, this curve, now get rid of that. Actually, let's not get rid of it. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of it. Just keep your viewing window as clean as possible. This curve in my control panel, I will up to degree five. And then align this to the curve. So there we go. Lovely. Control off. Now we can be rail. On to the surface. Control on. Rail one, let's try curvature. Okay, not too bad. Gen one, tangent. Mm, curvature failed. So it looks like we'll have to do some direct modeling down the line but that's okay if rail one's here clear edit rail one rail two for this one we'll want rail one rail two okay so again because I've kept the History on this curve, whoops, where um, edit. I can get these a little bit more planar. Like so, okay, they're not looking too bad. just by the zebra shader that this isn't aligned properly so rail 2 yeah curvature okay so there we go that's looking all right that's not too not too bad at all we don't have tangency here on this boundary or here on this boundary but with a bit of direct modeling, we can get that all squared away and looking all nice. So since the purpose of this video is not to teach you guys direct modeling, um, I'll leave it there um, and I'll just jump to one I made earlier where we do have Tangency, close that. Evaluate. Okay. So you can see with some direct modeling, I've achieved G1 continuity at all the surface boundaries. Um, and I'll just show you, control on. 
what I actually did was basically planarize all these holes so that they're easier to obtain G1 continuity. Um, and then I basically played with these CVs and these CVs until I got tangency along this boundary and these two boundaries. All the others were pretty easy. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, there's a Y fillet or Y blend um, that's quite clean and quite easy to control. Um, so yeah, I hope that workflow helps you out. Um, thanks very much for watching.